excited to show this to you today. So, we've managed to get X-Plane running in VR, which is no special thing, but we're running it in VR on two different machines. And I'll explain a little bit about what we're doing here. And we're running it so we can each be in the same cockpit together. So it's, I guess, typically called shared cockpit. Um, and Dad and I have been having a lot of fun with this. And so I wanted to share a little bit about the builds and then uh, the software setup that lets us to use two shared controllers um, and then show you, uh, show you some action, starting with some gliding. So I have a little uh, NZXT case uh, H1, which is not really slated to run high-end machines, but it seems to run great. Dad's got a RTX 2080 Ti and a 10900K um, uh, Intel chip uh, with 32 gigs of RAM. I've got a 64 gig RAM machine with all the same 1090K Intel uh, 10 core machine. And then I've got a 3080. Yeah, so we're very lucky this is not a cheap setup, but I hope in the future it becomes a bit cheaper so other people can enjoy this kind of cool thing. Um, so that's the setup we've got to run VR. And I'm running a, a new uh, HP Reverb G2, um, which we'll show you some, some action with later. This thing is incredible in X-Plane and really you, you almost can't see the pixels, it's so great. Uh, and Dad's got an Oculus Rift S, which is a bit smoother, but uh, obviously not quite as clear. But we, uh, we figured out how to get this working. So let me explain a bit about the physical setup before I go into the software. Um, shared control. Uh, now, I have no idea how you do this across a network um, other than being physically together. Uh, the reason is uh, I've plugged both the joysticks into one machine, into my machine, which is like the master machine. If you put jo two joysticks into one machine physically, that solves part of the problem. Um, but obviously, uh, the challenge is figuring out what to do when someone has is moving the stick and the other person's moving the stick. Because if you put two joysticks straight into X-Plane, um, X-Plane will jitter around and, and swap depending on the last input and basically the plane will not fly. Uh, and there'll be a lot of confusion and, and it will be a bit miserable. Um, so I'm gonna explain a little bit about how I did that. So, so I found a program called Joystick Gremlin, which is free. And what Joystick Gremlin does, if I finally get it open, is enables us to merge two joysticks into one virtual joystick. And that, it, that is enabled by a third-party program called VJoy. And I'm gonna show you guys the setup for VJoy here. I think there's a setup. So you can, this is a configuration app which comes with VJoy. Now you've got to install VJoy and you've actually got to restart your machine in order to install what effectively is a virtual joystick. So this thing is not a real joystick, but, the, but, the, but Windows thinks it is a real joystick. So we need to install that virtual joystick for this whole thing to work. That's a separate piece of software. We've done that, and I've called it VJoy Device One. That's the default. I've only got one. You can install 15 virtual joysticks if you want. Um, you then use a Joystick Gremlin to merge the two controllers into one. And so the way you do that is actually relatively simple. Um, you've got to go to Merge Access. And then I've got two completely different controllers here. It would be easier if you had two the same joysticks, and I'll show you the joysticks later. But we've got a, a, a Thrustmaster A20 and a VK a VK Sim Gladiator, which Dad uses. And what I've done is, depending on the axis that the that that um, joystick uses for different actions, um, we have um, we've put them in and we've merged them together. So what we have is. Uh, for the, the, this is for the throttle. So it's a slider. It's called the slider on the A10, and it's called the Z axis on uh, on Dad's uh, Gladiator, um, and that goes into the slider of the virtual joystick. So we've 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 merged it together. And the key is is to have this be a minimum thing for the throttle, and we'll talk about why that is later. Um, and then um, for the other half, um, for the axis, for the X axis and the Y axis, which is the um, uh, the actual sort of pitch and roll. Um, we've merged them together. And then finally for, uh, for yaw, um, I've merged uh, y, a Z rotation with Y rotation, which is what the yaw axis is. And there are various tools to let you help you do this. Um, uh, one, of the things, one of the things you can use is uh, this input viewer. This is not very user-friendly software, I have to admit. Um, but what it does is you can, you can go like 
uh, like this and show all these things and make sure things are set up right. So I'm going to move my joystick to the right and you'll see the virtual joystick is moving to the right as well. This is just rolling to the right. And if I move dance to the right, it also moves. And the cool thing is here, because we set it to min, uh, to sum, and this was easy actually. So, so sum seems to basically be a maximum. And what I mean by that is if I tip my joystick to the right, you'll see that the virtual joystick moves to the right as well. And if I tip dance to the right more, you'll see that the virtual joystick will move even more if he, if he moves it even more. So that's basically what's happening with, um, with, with, with this virtual joystick setup. And then with a the throttle, what we've got is the throttle's inverted because for some reason X-Plane, uh, the, the two, these two joysticks actually end up with inverted throttles. Um, what you'll see is um, for this, So it's a bit confusing, but if you imagine the bottom, the minus 100 is, 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 is maximum throttle. What you have is if you put them both down to zero, they go, it goes to zero throttle, which is 100. And as soon as one of us starts moving, you'll see it goes all the way down. And if the other person puts it down to zero, the other person, that's me now, can move it up to, to minus 100. And, and basically what we've got here is we've inverted for various reasons, I had to invert it for the virtual joystick. But then in X plane, I invert it again, and it ends up working fine. So the, the, that was the hardest thing by far was getting the throttle to work. So that basically, when the person puts when the person who's not in control puts their throttle to zero, the other person has full control over the throttle, the full range of throttle, and that's very important. Okay, that's the joystick setup, and that'll show you here uh, the the joystick on. Uh, yeah, this is the throttle side of the, these are very cheap, simple joysticks, nothing special here. We've definitely not got all kinds of cool HOTAS things going on. It's just very simple. Um, and this is my, this is my um, throttle here. So this all seems to work pretty well. Um, and now I will show you the X-Plane setup. So I'm going to go into X-Plane. This is a lot simpler. The X-Plane setup is not complicated. Um, basically what we're doing is Okay, these two joysticks are going into um, my PC, and but Dad still needs to be able to view what's going on and take part in VR and have a completely separate view from me. So the way to do that in X-Plane is quite simple. It's basically to set um, my machine up as the master machine, and then the key is to have Dad as external visuals, and I haven't done that yet, so let's do that right now. We've got both of our PCs hooked up to this um, TV, so I'm going to do that right now in front of you to show you that setup. So I'm going to switch to Dad's PC. I'm going to open up X-Plane. And we're linked in the network, by the way. You have to be in a home network. You could potentially do this across the internet with a VPN, but remember, you wouldn't get shared control. There's no way to have a, a 10 mile long USB cable. <laughs> so, um, and we set Dad's machine up to be external visuals to Nick, and you can see it's already appeared because I'm already there and it was set up like that before, to Nick's machine. It should show up. If you're on the same local network in Windows and hosts or every, everything are set up, it should pretty easily set up. There's a lot of other descriptions on the internet on how to do this. This is designed so you can use multi-monitors to view your X-Plane in a surround, surround monitor type setup. And we're using it differently. He has VR and basically we're doing it so someone has a completely different view. So let's go back to mine and show you the setup on the master machine. So we're back on my machine now, and we're gonna add external. Now, I haven't tried locked view. I'm guessing that's not gonna work because it's probably gonna be locked to whatever I'm looking at, which is miserable for him. We just set another one, an external visuals machine to independent view. And you see by default, it immediately shows dad's machine there. And that is literally it. So now we have virtual joystick set up so we have, and I'll show you that right now, and we have the visual set up. Um, and let's go into X-Plane and show you what this virtual joystick is doing now. So if you go into X-Plane, you'll see when I roll with my joystick, it goes, and when I roll with Dad's joystick, it goes too. So it's really great. It works perfectly well. Now, if we, if we counteract each other, it's going to do funny things. But if I'm rolling to the right, and then Dad comes and goes, I want to roll more to the right, it will do whatever the person who's rolling the most is. And obviously you're not gonna, you're generally not gonna do that. You're gonna just say the other person has control and let go of the controller, which is the right thing to do when you're sharing a plane. 
Um, the other, last thing to think about is because his joystick's plugged into my machine, um, all the other buttons and everything else, it's only the axis you need to do this clever V-Joy virtual joystick thing with. It's only the actual, like, the smooth axis. Everything else, um, you can uh, you just use normal buttons. So you go to the Gladiator, which is plugged in, and you know, say he wants to use brakes, right? There's his brakes, that's his Gladiator plugged in. All that's those settings you just do. And for me, I have brakes on a different button. And if you look at um, uh, the Thrustmaster here, there's my brakes there. So it's a different button. So you just make sure you set up all your buttons and everything else, you know, your, your trims, all the buttons like that person wants them set up, the key, to making the control work, the control surfaces work, is this virtual shared control. Now let's finally talk about the throttle a little bit, which which we talked about earlier because that's that's this sort of that was the most difficult part for me getting this working. So, um, uh, the throttle, I don't, it isn't reversed access. So actually, I don't know, quite know. I think X plane somehow takes minus one hundred to be a hundred, and that's just the way it works. I really don't understand why. Um, but anyway, so if we both, if I both, go, if we both go to zero. Again, imagine 100 is zero. Again, I don't quite know why X-Plane does it this way around. Um, and dad raises his throttle, the throttle goes up. Again, imagine the, the dark part is, is the up, okay? And he, say he raises it to half and I raise it past half. As I raise it past half, it will, go, it will continue going. So, but what we do when we're sharing control is when we, when we um, hand over control, we make sure we, we specify throttle down, throttle to minimum, and for that moment, the other person must then switch up to the, the throttle they want, and it works really, really well, it works fine. It's not quite the same as a real plane, obviously, um, but everything else works the same. So that's the setup. There's, just before we get started, there's one final thing I wanna talk about. If you're both in VR, there is one big limitation, um, and that is, uh, for reasons that are pretty obvious when you think about it, only one of us can use hand controllers. The, the um, external monitor view doesn't accept any input. It's not like any VR inputs are going to work. Now, you, you might be fooled if you, if, if, if you, the person who's the external visuals starts using their hand controllers, they're gonna to start to see things moving in the cockpit, and we'll show you that later. It doesn't affect the flight model at all. So you cannot, he, nothing dad does with his controllers in the plane itself will do anything with a plane. Um, and that makes sense. This is not, this is a bit of a hacky setup. This is not, um, shared cockpit VR supported by X-Plane. It's, it's a hacky way to do this. Um, and so only one of us can use a controller in VR in the plane, which is a little bit of a shame. But again, dad has full access to all the controls he's set up on his joystick, um, you know, plugged into my machine. So that works great. Um, everything else dad wants to do uh, in VR with, for example, the, all the, the menu and things like that all works perfectly. He can reset his position. He can do all the settings he wants in, in with VR and in, with his controller. But what he can't do is interact with the plane itself, even though it fools him sometimes and fools us in that, you know, he can flip switches. It just doesn't do anything with the actual plane um, and actually looks like it's flipping switches. So that's a major limitation. One hand controller. And that's all, the only the master machine can have a hand control. Or you can use two hand controllers, but they only work. Now, you might think, Maybe I could give dad the other hand controller, but the, that's the thing that I thought about. But of course, he's not going to see it moving around in his VR. So I could give it to him and it would do things, you know, at that point in the plane, which is not really realistic because there's nothing that far away in the plane anyway, um, but he wouldn't see it. So there's not much point in even using a second hand controller. So that's the one major limitation.